I'm going to begin with this photograph working upside down, starting with these shades of yellow and coming down towards the what will be the top of the picture space. Before I start working on my board, I'm going to mix my colours. I have a few pre-mixed here. So this is uh, this is cadmium lemon. I'm just going to add a little bit more to that. The next colour I think I shall need will be carmine. very very rich sky. In between I'm going to just add a little touch of carmine to make a, an orangey, burnt orange sunset colour. I'm going to add a little bit more cadmium, cadmium lemon to create that colour which is in between those two. Coming around I've got indigo here. And I think that will probably do. Let's see. It's quite dark. Perhaps what I need to do is uh, looking at the photograph. There are quite a lot of mauvey shades coming up to the very strong indigo. So what I think I, I might need is a colour that's in between my and indigo. So let's try adding just a little of the carmine to that. And I think because those these colours are a little bit more delicate in the photograph, I'm just going to dilute it. Let's go with that number of brushes here. I think I'm going to stick with my, um, this is a three quarter inch flat. I'm going to start with the lemon yellow and I'm going to put that on first and then I think just perhaps play with it a little and put it on dry paper. Um, and add a little water. Dilute it. And I think at this stage I'll angle my board. Carly will run down. In the photograph, there's quite a, dis a, a definite difference between the very pale, lemony sky at the bottom of the picture space and the rest of the sky more turbulently cloud. So I'm going to just lift some of this out with a brush that's been it's damp but has been dry. So just to give myself a little bit more light in the centre. The sun has just gone down completely in this painting, in this photograph, so uh, I, I don't have an orb to worry about, but um, I'd like to have that sense of its disappearance, and it's the glow in the sky. Now I'm going to wet the rest of the picture space with my hake. I'm going to leave that along with the little reservoir. I'm going to just leave that for now, create a little gap in between. 
so that they don't run together. And wet the rest of this surface. I'm just going to take out the excess with a brush that has been dried on the tissue. So it's just damp. So it's shining a lot less now. I think the first thing I'm going to do will be to paint my bright orange across the base of this shape, what, what will be the base of this shape. I haven't got too much paint on my brush. I'm keeping it quite dry. I'm going to just take it up to that edge. And if it's a little bit damp, that's fine. It will just softly run. But if not, it will remain sharp. Take this down a little bit. And then start to use my carmine. So there's some blue um, sky within this. Now I may leave a gap and see see what happens to those gaps. They'll probably disappear but they may not, some of, them, some of that may stay, so I might be able to come back into that. And because it's not a flat sky, I don't need to worry about a flat wash. I can, in fact, maybe now is the time to take the gradient away from my board to flatten it and just work with brush marks on the surface. already started to dry right down here but that doesn't matter. Um, I'm going to re-wet it with a lot of pigment of the colour. So let's just soften these shapes a little bit more. Now I'll keep that brush, my flat, for the red and I'm going to take a large round number 12 round and I'm going to start probably with the wet marks of the dark indigo. I'm just going to kind of go for it with those into my red surface. And I'm going to hope that some of it will mix wet into wet and as I work, it will dry a little bit and other things will happen. I'm looking at my photograph, but I'm not being hidebound by it. I'm just trying to be influenced by it. I know that as I leave, if I leave this um, wet into wet, a lot of what I do will disappear. A lot, of, a lot will close up um, because it carries on moving until it's dry. So this is quite a turbulent sky. I'm going to just work quite quickly, perhaps, around these little broken marks that I've left. And I'm looking a lot at the photograph. I'm letting my brush respond to what I see. So as I work, put my brush off at the moment and dry it before putting it into the next colour. It's important to dry your brush off between each, between each colour. You don't want to transfer the water from your water pot into your colour. It will dilute it too much. 
So I'm going to check on the wetness of the top. Yes, yeah, so it's a little bit drier now at the top. Perhaps not dry enough. Ideally, I would leave it a little bit longer. But I've got now I've got the purple on my brush, and I think I can turn it the other way up. Now. And also turn my photograph around and try working at the base of the picture's face. I'm doing the largest clouds first, let's get the bigger shapes, and maybe I just add less on my brush and try some other shapes. So I haven't got very much on my brush, but you can see the effect of this light colour in the wash, it's moving quite a bit and it will produce quite pale marks, they're not pigmented enough. So if I want more pigment, I take a little bit of my road wash, add some of these colours, so it's carmine and indigo, add more of those two. So I've got a stronger wash, stronger mix, and I'm going to take some of that out because it's still quite a lot, and I'm going to experiment with that. So now, so it's going in, I'm getting darker marks now, mixed in with those. So they will split the paint but they will leave more pigment in the, in the parcel. So we have different shaped clouds and a lot of dancing on the tip of the brush would be good to get the sort of turbulent shapes of the, of the uh, sunset. It's still quite windy up there. So lower down in the picture space, there's a lot more horizontality in the, in the marks and in the clouds. And um, higher up, the, there's more turbulence. So the spaces I left for blue have almost closed. But as they're tiny in, in the photograph, I'm going to go with that. Use these with a sharpness. So um, that might be as much as I would want to do, except perhaps for down here, where I might come back and just wolf in. This is probably quite dry now. It's this lemony part of the painting. Yeah, it's quite quite dry. It may be a little damp, but certainly no surface water. Um, and there are some pale clouds, pinkish clouds drifting across that. So I could almost do them just dry brush because the landscape will be mostly in front of this as well. But if I want them uh, softened, the, ed the edges softened, I can just wet the area to show you a bit of that. Just uh, moisten it and then put the marks into the moisture and um, put my marks into that re-wetted surface and then I can get um, soft marks again. So there are lots of things, lots of ways you can use wet in wet, wet on dry, wet on damp, um, and re-wetting the surface. I'm not going to bother too much about this because most of that will be behind the landscape. So then I've just got to pop in my little bits of pale blue, which I think I'll quickly pop in a touch of um, touch of cerulean. Again, not too much water. 
taking it off from the back of the um, hairs. And let's just touch in a little bit of blue there. Okay, we can leave it at that. 